we all need mothers. Jesus needed his father. That is why he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? But at the point of death, when you see the pierced heart of this man, there was only the blood of Mary, the milk of Mary, the bone of Mary, the woman of his life. Today, we reflect and pray over the passion of the Lord. But let us not forget that this God could not have had a body, would not have been able to give His body and His soul, would not have been able to say, this is my body and this is my blood. If a simple, humble woman did not lend him her body and her blood. In the upper room, a few hours before, the Lord said, This is my body, this is my blood. At Calvary, Mary standing at the foot of the cross was the first to say, This is my body, this is my blood. I gave him my body. I gave him my blood. And his image is in my heart. And when they pierced the side and heart of the Lord, Mary saw through, and like in a mirror, saw herself. By that time, love has been completed, and the greatest story has truly unfolded. We heard quite clearly from Father James that the three o'clock time is the hour of mercy, the hour of great mercy. Something very beautiful, something very important, happened at this hour. Three things, actually. The first thing that happened at this hour is the death of Jesus. He breathed his last, and in the Gospel of St. John, he said, it is finished. The second thing that happened at three o'clock was the side was pierced, and the heart was pierced also and blood and water flowed out. According to doctors at the time, when you pierce the body, blood normally comes out. But when you pierce the body and blood and water are already separated, it means that the body is really dead. So the separation of blood of water from the blood when the side of Jesus was pierced including his heart was really a sign that he was dead when he was pierced. These two things happened at Calvary. But something else happened in the temple and in another part of the gospel the Lord's gospel said the curtain the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom what it means is this that at the same time that the heart was pierced the veil of the temple also came down in other words when the heart was pierced and the temp the temple veil came down something beautiful was happening. And what was it? God was revealing Himself 
totally. When the temple veil was torn from top to bottom, people could already see the Holy of Holies. People could al- already see what was inside. People could already see the tabernacle. Gentiles or Jews, they could not see because there was no more veil. But when the heart of the Lord was pierced, why was the heart of the Lord pierced? So that we may see God, we may know God, and we may know how much God loves us. There are three things that we must understand about the piercing of the side, which resulted in the piercing of the heart, which resulted in the glory of God being manifested to us. First, the blood and the water, and then the second and the third is actually the unbroken bones. First, I told you earlier, when blood and water are separated and it comes out of the cadaver, it means that the body is indeed dead. But what is the symbol of the blood? The blood symbolizes forgiveness because the blood of the Lamb washes away sins. You remember on Christmas night, we are told that the baby was wrapped in swaddling clothes. Swaddling clothes is not the normal way to dress babies. You do not dress babies with swaddling clothes. Who do you dress with swaddling clothes? Lambs. Lambs that are unblemished. Lambs that are clean. Lambs that can be sold to become offering in the temple. In other words, when the baby was born at Bethlehem and wrapped in swaddling clothes, he was already wrapped in the clothes of the lamb whose destiny was to be emulated in the temple. So the blood symbolized forgiveness of sins. We say that during the Mass, don't we? Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, who takes away the sins of the world. So blood coming out of the side signified forgiveness. Water coming out from the side symbolized life. It is not only that we are forgiven, we are also given new life. Because water is more a symbol of life than food. You can survive with a few for a few days with water, even if you have no food. Because water is more a symbol of life than food. In fact, if you eat food without taking water, you can choke. Food can even kill you, properly understood. So you have the symbol of blood, which is forgiveness. You have the symbol of water, which is new life. What is the third symbol? Not a bone of his body was broken. He was pierced. His legs were not smashed anymore because he was dead anyway. For the other two criminals, their legs were smashed because they were still alive. But in the case of Jesus, his legs were not smashed, no bone was broken because he was already dead. What is the significance of the bone not being broken? Let us move thousands and thousands and thousands of years before. You remember in the book of Genesis, God created Adam. And when God wanted to create Eve, what did God do? He took a rib from Adam. He took a piece of bone from Adam. Adam was whole. And God removed a piece of bone from his body. And from that removed piece of bone, 
Eve was born. So what is the symbol of the bone that is not broken? The unbroken bone. What is the symbol of that? From that unbroken body of Jesus, another rib, another rib bone was taken. And from that rib bone, the new Eve is born and the new Eve is called church. We are born from the pierced side of Christ. With the blood, we are forgiven. With the water, we are reborn. But a piece of bone was taken from the Lord. Like rib was taken from Adam. And from that rib, Eve was born. From that piece of bone that was taken from the Lord, the church was born. Now, my dear brothers and sisters, the question runs in my mind as I pray this morning about the message of Good Friday. When they pierced the side of the Lord, and penetrated his heart. And there was blood. There was water. And uh, eventually, a bone was given so that the church could be born. The wife of the Lord. The bride of the Lord. What did we see in the pierced heart of the Lord? What did we see there? Did we see the newly wedded couple at Cana where water was transformed into wine? Were they there in the heart of Jesus? Did we see the widow of dying? Did we see the dead man raised to life? Did we see the wounded man on the road who is now well? Who did we see when the pierced side of the Lord was opened, when His heart was opened? Let me ask you a further question. Counting clue. Where did the Lord get His blood? Where did the Lord get the water from that blood? Where did the Lord get His bones? as a human being. It was the body of Mary. It was the blood of Mary. It was the water from the breast of Mary. It was from Mary's body that the bones of Jesus were developed and grew. In other words, in my heart of hearts, we know that the Blessed Virgin Mary was at the foot of the cross like a faithful disciple. But even if you do not see the Virgin Mary at the foot of the cross, I am very sure in my heart of hearts if you pierce the heart of the Lord and the Gospel said that they will look at Him whom they have pierced. And if you can see through the wound into the pierced heart what will you see or rather who will you see you will see the mother of God we all need mothers Jesus needed his father that is why he said father why have you forsaken me But at the point of death, when you see the pierced heart of this man, there was only the blood of Mary, the milk of Mary, the bone of Mary, the woman of his life. Today, we reflect and pray over the passion of the Lord. But let us not forget that this God 
could not have had a body would not have been able to give his body and his soul would not have been able to say this is my body and this is my blood if a simple humble woman did not lend him her body and her blood in the upper room a few hours before the lord said this is my body this is my blood at calvary Mary standing at the foot of the cross was the first to say this is my body this is my blood I gave her I gave him my body I gave him my blood and his image is in my heart And when they pierced the side and heart of the Lord, Mary saw through, and like in a mirror, saw herself. By that time, love has been completed, and the greatest story has truly unfolded.